Welcome to Pressure Points. Our topic is previewing WWDC. This is an event that I have been looking forward to for the past, call it year and a half. And Apple investors, if we look over the past month, have also been looking forward to this. Shares of Apple are up about 8% over the past month. That compares to the NASDAQ up about 5%. And the big outlier, of course, is NVIDIA up 30%. But the reason why NVIDIA is doing so well, of course, is related to AI. And that is the broader A topic related to WWDC this year. But the pressure point within that AI topic is Siri. And Siri, of course, is the punchline of jokes for most people. For those of us, present company included, that use it on a daily basis. It's typically to make phone calls, to know what the weather is like, or to set a timer. And those three use cases probably account for 80% of all use cases of Siri, but in fact are almost embarrassingly simple. And when Siri jumped into the game of a voice assistant 11 years ago, uh, initially through the phone and then now through most of Apple's products, I estimate there are just under 2 billion active Apple devices, monthly active devices that have Siri available on it that creates this essentially wrapper around our lives throughout our day that has access to this agent that very few of us use for good reason, is that it just simply doesn't have value. I think that that is going to change. And the reason why that's the pressure point for WWDC is the ability for Apple to make AI, generative AI accessible on many devices throughout our day is a competitive advantage for Apple. And ultimately, I think we'll do two things. Number one, it will improve the retention of Apple and their devices as people start to understand more how generative AI can be used throughout their day and separately create new revenue opportunities for Apple around a more advanced applications. And those revenue opportunities could come in the form of more revenue from the App Store or their own generative agent type of products that they can come out with over time. So getting Siri right, just because it's so ubiquitous throughout our day, even though most of us are not using it, is important. And it's critically important because I think many will give Siri another chance when they hear that it does have some generative, more of a conversation-like uh, type of context to it. And I think that uh, this is a window where they can really rewrite how consumers think about Siri and use this as the primary fabric that we're going to be interacting with AI. So what does that actually mean in terms of using Siri to interact with generative AI? We can ask it to do certain things. Get me an Uber to the airport. You could ask to order food. You could ask to book uh, different reservations. Uh, you can ask Siri, of course, to complete tasks, uh, find a calendar time that works for me and these three people. Uh, you could ask Siri to uh, uh, navigate things uh, or create generative messages, whether it's text messages or emails. It really is endless what you can do with generative AI, and Siri voice is a logical interface around that. And so I think this is a huge opportunity for Apple to do something that is unique to Apple, which is having that device and operating system, the privacy, all of that ecosystem working together. Siri is a fabric, that, uh, a thread that goes through all of that. And I think by empowering it with generative AI is going to be an opportunity to rewrite Apple's AI, um, the chapter of Apple and AI. So that's the pressure points. All eyes are on there. Uh, I'll get through some other topics. There's a lot of rumors about other things that are going to go on, but I think the other most important one is related to an AI partnership, and this most likely, of course, is going to be with OpenAI. And this has two pieces to it. On one side, a deal would essentially allow Apple to make up for lost ground over the past three, five years around missing generative AI, and they can quickly, within a few months, get all these incredible open AI experiences that they've shown uh, throughout the last couple of years and more recently at their developer day into Apple's products. And so what that means is you think about the Mac or the OS operating system, the Mac OS, the Mac operating system really hasn't changed since the mouse. And that was a big breakthrough, but having 
generative AI built into the operating system will just change how we interface. We will no longer be searching for documents. It will ju just be very simple. Show me all of my uh, conversations, whether it's documents or texts or emails that have to do with articles of incorporation and boom, we'll have it there. Uh, there'll be other efficiencies in terms of how we create content within different applications, whether Apple applications or third parties, but just the whole look and feel of the operating system will change by embedding a third party like OpenAI. Of course, they showed this with Windows and Copilot and OpenAI a year plus ago. And so it's not a breakthrough in that sense, but it will be a breakthrough for Apple users. And I think we'll see some demos of how we're gonna see generative AI within the operating system. So that's, that's one layer to this relationship is really uh, catapulting how we're going to use the operating system. Of course, another is within Siri, really powering more of a conversation-like experience. And for all the benefits that we just talked about, that'd be another logical leap forward when it comes to uh, this partnership. It's something that they have to do. It would simply to wait two, three more years for Apple to build this on their own it would give up way too much ground. And so they're making the right decision to do this. But I do want to emphasize that this is unprecedented for Apple to be outsourcing a core technology from a third party. Very different than what they've had with the default search in Google. This is a big deal. And I think it means that probably over the next three years, Apple's AI destiny is really in the hands of OpenAI. A uh, similar Microsoft's destiny is in the hands of OpenAI, and Amazon is in the hands of Anthropic. Uh, this is uh, just the reality of starting late to the game that, that these companies have had. And so uh, the right move to do, it picks up time, but it creates a longer-term problem. And I think that Apple will work to put in motion and is working to start to solve for that problem. And specifically is that they're going to be adding uh, their own models. They're going to be having small language models, which we'll probably hear about at uh, WWDC. And those are models that do something very specific on your phone. Could be something related to your watch and understanding what's going on with your heart rate uh, that is very specific to a device but they also will advance coming out with their own foundation model. Uh, they have a project, Ajax, that's well known, uh, that this is them building their own foundation model. So I believe over the next three years, uh, all problems turn into opportunities, and this uh, will create a big opportunity for Apple to come out with their own foundation model. And so that's uh, not the, the pressure point, but an important other topic is just the dynamics around working with a third party. As far as what the economic relationship is going to be, I essentially think this is going to be a wash between Apple and OpenAI. If it ends up being OpenAI, uh, you can build a case that there's a big benefit to Apple because all the things that we just talked about. Therefore, Apple should pay OpenAI several billion dollars a year. You could look at it that OpenAI is trying to get distribution. Despite all that we talk about OpenAI, they still only have a few hundred million daily uh, active users and uh, that is small relative to where they want to get to and having distribution through Apple devices that have don't have friction around accessing that technology is a big opportunity for OpenAI. So they, wanna, they may want to pay Apple several billion dollars a year for that access. I think you put it together, it's probably a financially a wash. OpenAI, by the way, one benefit for them to have access to these devices is it does create an opportunity for developers to want to build more with OpenAI to have products that work on those devices and then they get paid, OpenAI does get paid through uh, selling tokens. And so that's the financial piece to it, but bigger picture, right decision for Apple. Uh, longer term, I think that they need to uh, go at it their own and build their own foundation model. So I wanna uh, bring it all together here and at the highest level, I think that uh, WWDC well, it may not be a win for Apple stock the day of or the day after because the natural buying the rumors, selling the news. I think that this event will be critical and important because it starts in motion the ability for Apple to capitalize on something that only that they can do, which is bring hardware, software, services together, uh, uh, infuse AI into that, those three pieces that no other company does. 
and add a piece around privacy that I think really will resonate with consumers in the decade ahead as AI becomes a staple of our lives. So I think Apple's going to be a big beneficiary, I remain a shareholder, and I'm excited about the long-term potential related to AI and Apple. On behalf of Pressure Points, I'm Gene. Bye for now.